So there are two new developments in investigations about associates of Donald Trump and the January 6th insurrection. Both could turn out to be very significant. So first, a former associate of Rudy Giuliani may be changing his plea to guilty. Igor Fruman, a Ukrainian-born businessman, is charged with campaign finance violations for allegedly making illegal contributions to a pro-Trump PAC. Fruman pleaded not guilty in 2019, but a change of plea hearing is scheduled for tomorrow. Fruman and his business partner Lev Parnas, <laughs> Igor, Lev and Igor, allegedly helped Giuliani hunt for dirt on Joe Biden and his son Hunter prior to the presidential election. So if Fruman changes his plea to guilty, does that mean he's cooperating with the feds? The same prosecutors who are also examining Giuliani and his alleged dealings with Ukraine? It's like an episode of Billions. Giuliani has not been charged and has denied any wrongdoing. But if Fruman cooperates with investigators, what could that mean for Rudy Giuliani? The other news that could potentially have consequences for Trump allies relates to the House committee investigating the January 6th insurrection. The committee chairman, Congressman Benny Thompson of Mississippi, said yesterday that they will be seeking phone records related to January 6th, including from members of Congress. Mr. Chairman, could that include uh, the phone numbers of some associates and potentially family members of the former president? Well, we have uh, quite a, an exhaustive list of people. Uh, I won't tell you who they are, but it's uh, several hundred people. So you're looking for phones, tech, text messages, any kind of communications any, at all? Electronic yeah. communications, any right. letters, all of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Members, too. Yeah. Members. Uh, yes. You heard him. Hundreds of records of phone calls, texts, emails, and other communications, including from members of Congress. That is no small thing. And this is about to get really interesting. Here to break this all down is Glenn Kirshner, a former federal prosecutor and an NBC News legal analyst. Glenn, let's start with the House committee seeking the phone records, and then we'll get to Levin Igor. Lay out for us why that's important and what they are looking for and might find in some of those phone records. You know, one of the reasons it's important, Zerlina, is because phone records don't lie. You can't cross-examine phone records and have them say, I didn't place that call. So what I think the select committee is looking into is were there members of Congress who were communicating with uh, the, the members, perhaps constituents of theirs, who went on to participate in the attack of the Capitol on January 6th? We all saw the reports about how some members of Congress were giving tours to constituents on January 5th at a time when COVID had basically prohibited all tours of the Capitol. So those have been called reconnaissance tours. Well, some of what the select committee wants to learn is were those members of Congress in communication with people um, as part of the planning of what would go on on January 6th? Were they in communication with people on January 6th as the attack was unfolding? And then how about after the insurrection? You know, you can always look for the cover-up in the aftermath of a consequential crime like this. So I actually think the select committee is really well advised to go after these cell phone records to see what members of Congress or what staff members of members of Congress were communicating with people who ended up attacking the Capitol. In a phone records request like this, does that include social media messages and like WhatsApp and things like that? Or is it just your cell phone calls? So great question. With subpoenas, you can get electronic data. And what that data can tell you is that if I place this, a call to you on your cell phone, the data would show that my phone initiated a call to your phone. It would say what time it was. It would say whether the two phones connected or not and how long that connection lasted. But what it doesn't tell us anything about is the content of the call. So um, what you need for the content of calls, of text messages, of social media, DMs, direct messages, is a court order. So this is, this is often the first investigative step on the road to getting those communications. So that the select committee might find out that there were text messages being sent from a member of Congress's cell phone and an insurrectionist cell phone. But to get the content of those text messages, you need to take the next step and you need to get a court order.
It's important to understand uh, how these processes were. Congressman Benny Thompson was asked if the committee would seek records for Trump family members, and he didn't confirm or deny that. Do you think they'll seek the records of Trump and his family members, um, you know, on the day of January 6th? They were definitely active. I mean, we've we've all seen them da- doing, you know, the dancing under the tent. Um, but I'm curious what their communications were as well that day. You know, we've seen the tent celebration, and I- I'm not sure how the select committee could not follow that legitimate lead. After Don Jr. gave his speech, um, let's see who he was communicating with. Um, that may have ended up marching down to the Capitol, just like his daddy told the supporters to do, and stop what was going on in the Capitol. That was a direct command by Don Jr.'s father, former President Donald Trump. So I don't see how the select committee can avoid acquiring those cell phone records as well. So let's turn uh, to Giuliani's friends, Lev and Igor. So refresh our recollections on who these two guys are and why is this expected guilty plea important? Yeah, this could have uh, really dramatic consequences for Rudy Giuliani, because as you'll remember, uh, Lev Parnes and Igor Fruman were, among other things, globe trotting with Rudy Giuliani, trying to gin up false dirt on President Biden that could then be used to interfere in U.S. elections. So ultimately, both of them and two other co-conspirators were indicted in a lengthy indictment in federal court in New York for essentially illegally funneling foreign money into U.S. politics, specifically to a PAC that supported Donald Trump. So uh, they uh, uh, he is charged with four separate counts, two counts of conspiracy, one of false statements to the FEC, and one of falsifying records. It carries a statutory maximum of 35 years. But now what we heard is it looks like he's going to change his plea from not guilty to guilty. And let me tell you, uh, as a former prosecutor, Zerlina, I would never let a consequential defendant plead guilty, a guy like Igor Fruman, unless it was with cooperation. Um, You can't stop somebody from walking into court and pleading guilty to all charges in the indictment, but then he's not going to get any benefit. So I suspect when we see this hearing play out in court and the prosecutors share publicly the terms of this plea agreement, I suspect we're going to see that Igor Fruman is now cooperating with law enforcement and perhaps has for some time. That spells real trouble for Rudy Giuliani. So... Rudy Giuliani definitely, I'm sure, was uh, a little anxious. Maybe he was sweating a little when he heard this news. Is there anybody else in the Trump orbit that this news could spell bad news for? Maybe somebody we're not thinking of. What could be in, um, you know, Lev's uh, testimony to the feds, not testimony, but his cooperation, if that's the case, to the feds uh, about other folks? I mean, could he have that information as well? You know, I suggest that guys like Mike Pompeo might not sleep quite so well tonight. Why? Because uh, Lev and Igor and Rudy were all part of dirtying up Ambassador Maria Yovanovitch. Why? Because she was standing in the way of what Rudy Giuliani was trying to accomplish in the Ukraine, ginning up this false dirt on Biden and getting the the president of Ukraine, President Zelensky, to announce a bogus investigation. So, um, and and we all know that what ended up happening to Ambassador Yovanovitch, a State Department employee, is she unceremoniously got yanked out of her post, and then Mike Pompeo would not stand up for her, which I thought was disgraceful. So it could very well be. We can't say there's absolutely a connection, but if I were Mike Pompeo, if I knew that Igor Fruman was going to be pleading guilty and cooperating with prosecutors, that might make me a little uncomfortable. Hi, I'm Zerlina Maxwell. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more from Zerlina by clicking any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thanks for watching.